In the NBA, there are many things that are needed to have a successful team. A good coach, a front office willing to make moves to get you what you need, and of course, a team of players that'll work together in order to get the ultimate goal, an NBA title. But to do this, you need contracts that bind them to the team, and sometimes teams go way overboard to try and make this happen with bad results. Allow us to show you nine worst contracts in the NBA right now. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Just a reminder about our new giveaway. We're giving away the new iPad Pro or the new iMac Pro. The choice is yours. All you have to do is watch the full video, leave a like, comment the keyword hidden in the video, and make sure you're subscribed. It's that simple. 9. Russell Westbrook. 5 years. $206 million. Let us be absolutely clear right now. There's no doubt in anyone's mind that Russell Westbrook is one of the best players in the NBA. It's undisputed. The man averaged a triple-double a few seasons ago with the thunder that was legendary. That's not the issue. The issue here is his contract, as well as his personality. After failing to lead the thunder on his own to the title following the loss of Kevin Durant, Westbrook got traded to the Houston Rockets to team with his former teammate, James Harden, who has been dominating the league in his own right. The problem here is that the Rockets are paying $342 million across the next four years for a Russell Westbrook-James Harden combo that honestly probably won't work out. They're sixth in the West right now with a record of 40-24, to which isn't bad, but it's not top tier like many hope for. Plus, with Harden's large contract, that means you have little wiggle room to go and get supporting players to flesh out the team. In short, they paid a lot for a number two player, but might not have what it takes to fill out the rest of the team because of it. 8. John Wall. 4 years, $170 million. Ah, the Washington Wizards. Just when you think they're about to turn the corner, something happens and it all falls apart. In this case, their falling apart moment was when their legit great player in John Wall had a major Achilles injury and hasn't played for them since. Why is that bad? because he signed a four years, $170 million extension with the team that kicked in during the 2019 season, which is technically still ongoing because of the lockdown, and yet he hasn't played a minute for them all season. In many ways, John Wall is proof that a great career can be derailed because of an injury. We honestly don't know how good he's going to be when he comes back. Most project that he won't be as fast because of the injury and all the time off. And that says nothing of his shooting when he returns. Apparently, things are getting so bad that his endorsement deal with Adidas is growing more and more sour, so they're going to buy him out. Talk about kicking a guy when he's down. 7. Blake Griffin. 3 years, $110 million. Here's another example of a young career going kind of sour. In fact, if you think about it, was Blake Griffin ever really brought up during the 2019 season? We can't remember, and we doubt that it was for much as the Detroit Pistons were 2640 at the time of the lockdown. Which is sad, because we know that Blake Griffin can play. He was a major part of the Los Angeles Clippers for a majority of his career, and when he was on, especially with backup via DeAndre Jordan and Chris Paul, he was on. And as noted by some, his time with the Pistons hasn't dulled his stats. So why is this deal a bad deal? Simply put, he's injury prone very injury prone, and that led to a lot of bad feelings among the Clippers, which led to him being traded to Detroit, who had no chance of getting to the playoffs even with Blake. So to pay him $110 million despite not being in his prime anymore and being an injury threat virtually every time he's on the court? Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch. 6. Chris Paul, 4 years, $160 million. The phrase, how the mighty have fallen, is one that definitely applies to Chris Paul. Because in all truth, Chris Paul might just be one of the greatest NBA players to never get an NBA title. This man is a floor general. Whether he was with the New Orleans, Los Angeles, Houston, or now OKC, he is a threat, and people know it. But when it comes to the playoffs, either he himself comes up short, his team lags behind, or in the closest he's ever gotten to the title, he got a key injury which led to the opposing team usurp the Rockets and head to the finals. And when he got traded to OKC, it was a very big case of bad blood. They got rid of him like he was nothing, and that definitely stung. But it stung the Thunder just as bad, because now they're on the hook for his $160 million that he's still owed. 
Ironically, OKC and the Rockets have the same record in the West, which proves that while burned, Chris Paul can still play, and he'll very much be in the playoffs when the league returns. But the deal is still costly, and many wonder if he'll be traded after the season is over, barring a surprise surge in the playoffs. 5. DeAndre Jordan, 4 years, 40 million. You're going to see two Brooklyn Nets on this list, and the first is DeAndre Jordan. When he was on the Los Angeles Clippers, he was part of a trio that made a big impact via Griffin, Paul, and himself. There was even an odd trade scandal around him. It was odd. But slowly, his worth honestly started to degrade, to the extent that he's now known as a stat patter, and his defensive abilities aren't what they should be. So the fact that he's making $40 million with the Nets is very odd. Except when you realize that he's good friends with the now dual stars of the Nets in Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant. Yep, he used his friendship with them to get a good deal, and now he's, well, playing with the Nets. That's about all we can say. They have a losing record, and yet somehow are still in the playoff hunt. Not a good look for the East. 4. Kevin Love. 4 years, 120 million. The tale of Kevin Love is honestly a sad one when you really think about it. You see, he started off with the Minnesota Timberwolves and was a machine with them. He was a big name in a small pond that was desperate to get to a bigger pond, Pronto. Eventually, he got his wish and was whisked away to Cleveland to join the Cavaliers and help LeBron finally bring a title to the city, which they did, and despite some injuries, most everyone agrees that Love played a big part in the finals he was in, including the time they won it. But ever since LeBron James left to go to the Lakers, Kevin Love kind of stinks. He doesn't average the stats he had with both LeBron or the Wolvers. He's only averaged 47 games per season over the last three seasons because of injuries. And when he does play, it hurts to watch. Cleveland is dead last in the East and has one of the worst records in the NBA as a whole. Now, sure, that's not all because of Kevin Love. But when you sign a deal for $120 million, you better show that you deserve it. He's not right now. 3. Andrew Wiggins four years, $122 million. One of the biggest problems in sports is when a younger player or talent gets way too much money when it's clear they don't deserve it. Andrew Wiggins is guilty of that. Granted, he averages about 20 points per game, so thus he can play. But when you look beyond that stat metric, you see that he's not living up to the potential that many felt he was going to bring. Which is sad, because the Timberwolves were counting on him and Carl Anthony Towns to tag team it up and deliver the Wolves to the promised land. Instead, they're at the back of the pack in the literal sense in regards to the East. Wiggins is known as a selfish player who only cares about scoring and not being a team player, or playing defense. That doesn't fly in the NBA, and it definitely doesn't warrant over $120 million. 2. The Charlotte Hornets. Too much money. The irony that is the Charlotte Hornets is very great. On one hand, they're one of the younger teams in the NBA, and thus they have yet to find their true identity, and they're owned by the one and only Michael Jordan. What's more, the franchise is worth over a billion dollars. The problem? They suck. They suck constantly and consistently, and while Michael Jordan is the GOAT, he's lame in terms of running a franchise. The best player they ever got was Kemba Walker, and now he's a Boston Celtic, and doing great there, by the way. They're overpaying certain players and not getting the right pieces to save their team. That's the definition of bad contracts. And as much as we hate to say it, it's mainly MJ's fault. 1. Kyrie Irving. 4 years, $142 million. I'm sure some of you out there will see this as a low blow, but honestly, we don't care. Kyrie Irving is a brat. For real. Look at his time in Cleveland. He hated working with LeBron and dreamed of being the solo star of a team. So he goes to Boston, gets his wish, and drives everyone crazy. So much so that the Celtics did just as good with him as they did without him. And now they're honestly better off with Kemba Walker as noted. Now, he's with the Nets, and he helped bring Kevin Durant to them despite being injured and out the whole season, even with the potential for return in the revised playoffs. But what has Kyrie done for the Nets in Durant's absence? Not much. As noted during the DeAndre section, they have a losing record, and Kyrie has been hurting during the season as well. So you're paying near $150 million for a player that is doing what exactly? So what do you think? What do you think of these NBA players who aren't living up to the hype and cost of their contracts? Which of these do you personally feel is the worst of the bunch? Or did we miss a big one? 
Let us know in the comments below, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the channel.